Hello everyone and welcome to today's presentation on My Health Record Privacy and Security. My name is Tinder Cantor and I have with me my colleague Alicia Graham and we're both digital health educators in the education team here at the agency. So we're here today to talk to you about um, the security and access features of My Health Record and how you can keep the information in your My Health Record private in the way that you choose. So you can manage the information in your My Health Record, you can control who has access to this information, and you can see who's accessed your information as well. So which healthcare providers, or if you have any representatives who has access to your My Health Record. So we'll also be answering some questions at the end in a panel. Um, and if we run out of time, we'll be able to also follow up some of your questions via email. So, We'll also be showing you some extra resources at the end. Um, so these are just some recordings of previous sessions. You might be joining us after having been at a different webinar um, where we've introduced My Health Record and you may wish to also, um, you know, brush up on that or you may wish to view this session again. So before I begin the session, um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on, where, on which we're meeting throughout Australia. So I'm joining you from the lands of the Yuggera people. I'm joining you, um, sorry, I'd also like to pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and elders from other communities who may be joining us today. So this platform, um, GoTo, might be new to you. Uh, before we start, there is some housekeeping information which may help you throughout the session. So firstly, your microphone will be muted throughout the presentation, uh, but you can ask questions. Uh, please just post your questions into the chat. Um, and then at the end of the session, when we have the panel discussion, we'll be able to answer some of those, or if we run out of time, we can also follow up via email. To collapse the GoTo interface or to make it a bit smaller, please click the orange arrow at the top of your screen. So this will just minimise it and uh, make sure that it doesn't take up so much of your screen space. And if your screen and sound don't match, it may be due to a poor internet connection. So in that case, you may need to leave and then come back in to the session. Um, that normally fixes this problem. So. Hopefully that doesn't happen though. And now for today's agenda. So first of all, we're going to do an overview of My Health Record again. Uh, just very briefly revisit um, what My Health Record is and the types of information in My Health Record. Uh, we'll then be looking at how the My Health Record system is protected by legislation and also some of the cyber security features that keep the information in My Health Record safe. We'll then move on to how you can manage your records, privacy and access settings. And we'll share some helpful resources which you can access after the session, some recordings and some modules. Um, and then we'll be answering some questions at the end. So very briefly, a My Health Record overview. So what is My Health Record? Well, My Health Record is an online summary of your health information. Um, when you have a My Health Record, you can access this anywhere at any time. So it's a national system, which means your healthcare providers and any representatives that you have um, can also access uh, My Health Record. Um, especially in an emergency, this is really useful. Your My Health Record may contain information about your immunizations, your vaccinations, um, your medicines, your pathology and your diagnostic imaging reports or test results, um, hospital discharge summary information. Um, this information, if it's in your record, is all available in one place. So you can also add information to your record. Um, for example, your personal health summary or some personal health notes, your advanced care planning information. Um, and this is really helpful, especially when you're, you know, wanting to keep a track of your health. Um, all of this makes my health record very useful. Um, when you're seeing multiple healthcare providers, you don't need to remember as much information. Um, and of course, today, 
this session is about how you can control the privacy and access settings in your My Health Record, and that speaks to how My Health Record is personally controlled, one of the greatest benefits of My Health Record. So what is in My Health Record? I've mentioned a few documents before, um, but some of the things that you'll be able to see in your record include a shared health summary, all documents that are uploaded by your healthcare providers. Um, you can also access your pathology results. And in fact, pathology test results are the most commonly viewed documents in my health record. As soon as COVID-19 PCR tests are uploaded by the pathology lab, um, you'll be able to see your results. And I guess this has been a very common use of my health record. Um, I personally know that as soon as these test results are available um, for myself or for my family, I want to be able to access and see these. Um, secondly, um, other information available in my health record may come from Medicare or from um, the pharmaceutical benefits scheme, so medicines information, um, your Department of Veteran Affairs. Um, you can also see your Australian organ donor status in there if you've um, shared this and information from the Australian Immunisation Register, such as your vaccination information. And now you can choose what information flows into your record from these sources. Um, just have a look in your records privacy and settings tab to see what you have set up. And if you find some of that isn't flowing in and you'd like it to be, you can always um, change the settings there. Lastly, as I mentioned, you can also add some information to your My Health record, um, or if you are a carer, or a nominated or authorised representative, you can also add information to the person that you care for. So examples of this kind of information, again, are things like uh, advanced care planning information or your personal health summary, emergency contacts, um, and childhood development information. So let's have a closer look now at My Health Record security. So there are people, processes, technologies, and legislation keeping the information held in My Health Record secure. Many safeguards are in place to protect the information. So some of these include strong encryption, firewalls, secure login processes, and also um, audit logging. It sounds a bit complex, but um, these are all uh, technical terms and they keep your information secure. So the My Health Record system is, you know, has this kind of strong safety. But the people who work in the cybersecurity centre within the Australian Digital Health Agency are involved in this work and they all have to have security checks as well. All data within the My Health Record system is, is stored here in Australia. Um, there's a layered security model with multiple security controls in place to protect the privacy and security of your information. So the range of security processes that are in place limit access to the system, which means that the software or um, what your healthcare provider uses, such as your doctor, your specialist or your pharmacist to access um, your My Health Record, this software is tested for safety and security and um, it has to go through checks and meet certain requirements before it can connect to the system. So this includes all healthcare provider software and also mobile applications such as the new My Health app and you may have heard of the My Health app. The legislation in place governs how the My Health Record system is accessed, managed and used. So your My Health Record and your rights are protected by law. So the primary purpose of your My Health Record is to support your healthcare. And so no one is permitted to access or ask you to disclose any information within your record for insurance or employment purposes. The information from your My Health Record also cannot be released to law enforcement or to a government agency without your consent or a court order and it's a criminal offence for someone to access your record for a purpose other than providing you with healthcare. So there are serious penalties. Now to look at consumer privacy access and controls. So 
you can choose to enable My Health Record privacy settings to control which healthcare provider organisations can access your record. And you can choose to set access codes, such as a limited document access code, and give it to the people or the healthcare providers you want to access your record. And just in the same way, you can set a code over your whole record. So you can restrict access to your whole record and decide who you give this code to. Um, so Alicia will be covering setting a limited document access code and a record access code in detail throughout the session. In an emergency, a healthcare provider can use a break glass function, but this is like a, a monitored um, and logged access. So um, I'll be talking about record access history shortly, and there you'll be able to see if a person has accessed your record using the break glass function. You can also choose to receive an SMS or email alert that reports in real time when a new healthcare provider accesses your My Health record or uploads a document. So you'll be able to see um, what they do uh, and you can choose this feature and set this feature for yourself. So as I mentioned uh, just a moment ago, you can always access your record access history. So for peace of mind, you can check it um, to see what has been done in your record. So you can have a look to see the time and date of access, which healthcare provider, organisation or authorised person has accessed your record, the action that was taken or details of your own access. And a healthcare provider cannot actually see your access history. Only you and your representatives with full access can see it. So that does give peace of mind. So now I'll hand over to my colleague, Alicia, to take us through to the end of the session. All right, thank you very much for that, Tunda. So we are going to go into the next part, which is looking at how do we actually go and set these uh, different controls for your particular record. Now, I do just want to mention that all these ones that we are going to go through for the rest of the session doesn't mean you have to set these. It's just an option if that's something that you would like particularly to help um, the security and privacy of your particular record. Okay, before we get into it, of course, we need to make sure we have access to our My Health record. So we do need to be signing in through MyGov and we need to make sure that the My Health record is linked in your MyGov. In there, it's gonna ask to verify your identity through a range of different information and documents, but it will step you through that. Once you've got all that in place, um, you can start to set up your My Health record. And today we're gonna look specifically at our controls that we can set for our documents. So when we first log in, we're going to see the uh, records that are available to you. So in this example, we can only see Sung Steel's record because that's the only one that is available. However, if you are an authorised or nominated representative, so you may have a child, for example, and you are controlling their record, you would have their name beside there. So all you need to do is select the correct one. So in here, this is the record home and this is the default page shown once you've selected the record. Now from here, what we want to do is go to the privacy and access tab up the top right hand corner. This is where we can make lots of changes to those controls of your record amongst other things that I'll describe in a moment. So once we click on the tab, we can see a range of different uh, buttons as such in here. So we've got our My Representatives, we've got the next one across as the My Healthcare Organisations, we've got Manage My Document Access and My Record Access History Sections. So I will be going through each of these and how you can use them throughout the rest of the session. And we'll keep coming back to this page as a reference point. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is the My Representatives. So again, remember you don't have to make these changes if you don't need nor want them, it's just an option for you. So once we click in, this is the first thing we're going to see. Now, if it's the first time you are opening this page, there may be very little or no information available and that's okay. 
If you already have a representative, you will see their information in the table on the screen. So that's just at the bottom there. I will give you information if they have accepted your invitation to be a nominated representative. Uh, it also gives an uh, idea of what access they have in that particular record. Now, if we want to invite another representative or invite your first representative, what we need to do is click on the pink invite someone button. It will take you to a screen confirming that you are wanting to appoint a nominated representative. And once you've clicked continue, you will see this page here. Now on here, we what we need to do is we need to fill in our chosen nominated representative's name and details. And we also need to select what level of access you wish to give them. Now, just to let you know that each one, so the general, restricted and full access, they do have a definition under each of them. So you just need to look at that and see which best suits this particular representative and select that one. And then you need to be clicking continue. On the next page, what it's going to do is show your nominated representative's personal access code. So this code there that's circled, it needs to be given to your representative so that they can access your My Health record. Now this code will expire after 30 days if they haven't used it by then. So you will need to create a new one and send it to them if that is if that happens. What we do once we're done with this page and we've got the code and we've sent it off to them, we can click done. Once we click done, what's going to happen, it's going to take you back to that My Representatives page where it had the list of any representatives and our new representative, which is Declan Steele, would then be shown in that area. Okay, now we've looked at the representatives, we're going to look into how to set a record access code. Now, what we need to do for that is we need to actually click on the My Healthcare Organization section. Now with a, a um, record access code, just like Tunda was saying before, this is a code that is going to be on the whole of your record. So any healthcare provider that is going to go into your My Health record won't be able to get in there. They'll be prompted to put a code in, which can only be given by you as the patient. Okay, so once we've clicked in there, um, if you haven't changed any settings yet, the organizations will have general access to your record. So this access level really means that your healthcare provider can see all documents that haven't been restricted, and they can also add clinical documents to your record. And of course, that is only for the purposes of providing care to you. What we can do to check to see if your record is set to general access is by scrolling down to this section here, which is called the All Other Healthcare Providers section. And we can see that there is all healthcare providers are involved in your care can access it. So that's that general access. Now, if you're wanting to change that, what you need to do is click on the manage access link. When we click on that link, it's going to take you to the limited access to your My Health record page. So this is where you can set a limit limit for the healthcare providers and by putting in that code. So for this code, we do need to choose a unique code that's between four to eight characters. And then we need to enter that in both boxes. And of course we need to click save. Once we've clicked save, you're going to see a dialogue box that will appear and that will let you know that your record access code has been set. Once you click OK from here, it will take you back to that privacy and access page that we started out with. So here we can see um, that same page that we're in, but now we can see that we've set a record access code. We can see that there. So if there's any stage that you forget your code or um, you need to um, grab it because you can't remember it for whatever reason, this is where you would go to to find that information. Of course, from this page, you can also remove this code if that's no longer necessary for your particular record, or you can update it if you're wanting a different code. Okay, 
what we're going to look at now is looking at a limited document access code. So this is the code that we talked about that would go on certain documents. So a healthcare provider would have access to all of your record, apart from a few selected documents that you are going to manage the access for. Now, before we can actually set that code, we need I need to show you how you would actually manage access on an actual report. So most of your documents you are going to find in the documents section and you need to go down to the clinical documents. For today's example, we're going to be looking at a pathology re result here. And what we're going to do is click on manage access. So this means that I'm going to be putting a code on this particular pathology result. When we click on manage access, it's going to show us this information here. We need to select the document access level that we require. There are a few different options here. There's restricted access. So that's restricting that chosen document, which is what we're going to use today. Further down the page, we can also see hide or remove documents. Now, if you're going to hide the document, that just means that your representatives and your healthcare providers won't be able to see that document, but you will still be able to see it. The other option of removing a document is going to completely remove it from your record and no one, including yourself, will be able to see that anymore. So it's really important to be careful of these access levels so that you don't lose any information you actually wanted on your My Health record. Because um, when you use the remove document uh, access level, it's taken off your record permanently and it won't be able to go back on. Okay, so what we're choosing is restricted access when we're doing a limited document access code, and then we need to make sure we click save. Okay, so now we've gone back to our privacy and access page because now we've restricted a document, we actually need to set that code. So we need to click on the manage my document access. In here, we can see how many documents are in the My Health record for you, which would be eight in this instance, and also how many have, have restricted access set. So we just restricted one, so we can see one here. When we want to set that limited document access code, we need to go to the very bottom here and click on set limited document access code. Very similar to the previous steps, what we need to do is have a unique code that is between four to eight characters. We need to make sure we're entering it into both boxes, make sure they're matching, and then clicking save. Again, you'll have a dialog box come up to let you know that it has been set, it's all been successful. And once we click OK, it's going to take us back to that privacy and access page. Now we can see from here that not only do we have eight documents and one that is set to restricted, restricted, we have a limited document access code that is also set up. That code needs to be provided to your healthcare providers if you want them to see that specific document. They won't know that that document is on your file until you give them that particular code. Now you do need, if you need to update your code or remove your code, you can go down here and click on any of these hyperlinks and go through the same process. Again, if you need to find out what your limited document access code is because you've forgotten as I would probably forget uh, then you can see on that left hand side there. Okay the last section we're going to look at is the my record access history which Tunda had touched on before. So what we can do in here is we can actually look at who is accessing it and what they're doing. So at the very start of this page, it does have a range of filters that are available for you to help you narrow down to a specific thing that you're looking for. However, you don't have to use that. All you can do is roll, you can scroll down the page and you will see this table here. Now this will provide you information on the date and time that it was accessed, who accessed it, what they did in your documents or in your records, and if they made any changes or just read it. Uh, Tunda did mention that we can see if the emergency access function has been used, as we can see in this details section, it has emergency access used. So you can see all instances of access within your My Health record in a nice, really easy way of doing it. Okay, I know I've gone through a lot today, so we're just going to go through a couple of different resources. Uh, the first being the My Health app. 
So just to let you know that there is an app that's available to download in both um, Apple and Android, Android phones. Basically, this is allowing you to view and download documents from your My Health Record onto your mobile device. And it also has the ability to share documents um, with your with other people or even organizations, healthcare organizations. That is, of course, an option. It doesn't need to be used. You can just use it for viewing if that's what you wish. Now, I know I've gone through a lot of information very quickly today. So if you're a little bit unsure about any of those steps, it's a really great idea to look at our e-learning modules, which um, if you go to our website at the Australian Digital Health Agency and go to the um, modules for everyone, as we can see on the left hand side there, you can go through and they have amazing videos that step you through all that that I went through today. Um, lots of information, a really good self-paced way of learning about this information. Also, you could um, scan this QR code just for a quick way of accessing the digital health learning. We do have some future digital health webinar sessions. If you are interested, you will be able to find them on the Australian Digital Health Agency's website, and you will get a copy of the slides uh, that will come out in the next day or so in an email coming out to you. So you can just click on those registration links if that's easier. If you don't have time to attend another session, you're more than welcome to have a look at our past digital health sessions that have been recorded. Again, these will be in there for you to just click a uh, link to those recordings. All right, I know we've only had a couple more minutes, so I'm gonna just see if we have any questions that have come through to the chat. All right, I can see one question has come through. If you're thinking of a question now, you're more than welcome to pop it into the questions box on the control panel. Uh, it is anonymous, only myself and Tunda will be able to see it and we'll just be reading out the questions and the answers. Okay, the first question is, will my past medical history be added into my record? So your previous medical history, like your older tests or medical reports won't, will be, sorry, they won't be available within your My Health record. Um, you do have some information that is older, so you can get like your Medicare um, information and your pharmaceutical be benefits information. So your pharmacy side of things and your medical practice side of things, that information can be uploaded. Of course, your um, organ donor status, that information can be added um, as well as your immunization information that comes from Australian Immunization Register. Uh, if you do want anything else like past history, medications, etc., uploaded, you can ask your doctor to add a shared health summary. Um, and basically that just summarizes your medical history and puts that all in there. Or you could do a personal health summary as well. Okay, I can't see any more questions. So I think we've done, gone right to time, so that's perfect. I think we will leave it there. So thank you so much for joining today's session. At the close of the webinar today, you will have two questions pop up in a survey. Really appreciate you to take the time and just fill that out for us. We try and make these sessions as relevant as possible for you, but we can't do that without your really valuable feedback. So we really appreciate if you take the chance to do that. All right, thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon.